Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Wednesday of the 33rd week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because He was near Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain obtain kingship for himself, and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten coins, and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him, and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants call to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant, too, he said, You take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you are a demanding person. You take up what, is, what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words, I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding person, taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are many similarities with this particular parable and others where Jesus Uh, For example, uh, talked about the talents. He gave some five talents, some two, and some one talent. And they, of course, did a a amount of investment. So it was a, a similar parable to the one here. And we need to remember that this parable comes right at the time where Zacchaeus has just mentioned what he is going to do with his wealth. He's going to give half of what he has to the poor. He's going to take and offer four times more to those that were extorted. And and so he's talking about the use of his wealth uh, because of the way that he has encountered the living God in Jesus. And so here he speaks a parable, again, using a related subject, the issue of wealth. But he uses it in terms of Not what is going or what has happened with Zacchaeus, but what will happen. Now, the people are anticipating, many of them, that him as the Messiah, that he's going to Jerusalem and there he's going to establish the kingdom of God. And that's not what's going to happen. He's not going to go there. And this is one of the things that's going to cause that great revolt You may remember that just right after this, this triumphal entry into Jerusalem, those people were crying Hosanna to the son of David. And many of those same people later in the week were calling crucify him. And they were despondent because he didn't do what they anticipated. They thought that he was going to come and overturn the Romans and begin to establish again, uh, you know, the kingdom of God in this new way and that's what they anticipated so jesus is again giving them a hint that's not what's going on in fact the reason he's going to jerusalem 
is he's going to go to a far-off country to obtain a kingship for himself. And what that is, is through his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension, he is going to return to the earth as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's why next week we celebrate, uh, or this next Sunday, uh, the solemnity of Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. That, that he is going away to return as a king. And the beautiful thing is this is very similar to something that took place uh, in the time of Jesus. And that was that um, uh, Herod the Great died and his son Archelaus traveled to Rome to get his kingship and uh, because he believed that he was going to be the successor of his father. And as he did so, people ran uh, ahead of him going to Caesar to ask that he not get the title of king. And although he was given the title, there were people that opposed him. And of course, he dealt severely with that. Now, this is a little different. We have Jesus, but we also have those who are, are standing against his kingship and are standing against all that he's, he uh, basically has been doing. The Pharisees and the scribes kind of were leading this entourage of naysayers, and they continue to do so even in Jericho and on into Jerusalem. So he's foreshadowing something that is going to take place, and in doing so, that there is going to be an entrustment, that he is going to entrust the gift of the good news to many. And that's what the gold coin really symbolizes, doesn't it? Is this wonderful gift that he is going to give to many that can take in his absence and multiply the, the impact of that great message. And um, again, we have uh, one, one servant, one citizen uh, that... Uh, when, uh, when Jesus returns, he has 10 additional coins. Now, this is symbolic of the multiplication of the good news. And to another, uh, again, uh, he has the five and says you're going to be in charge of five cities. And again, this really has to do with the impact of the gospel in the heart of the faithful churches. And again, someone that didn't take the good news and use it uh, is going to have it taken away from him. And it's, it's not going to bode well. So this really, again, is a warning for anyone who in receiving the good news just chucks it away, hides it away, says it's not really a message that needs to go out. So there's a lot going on in this parable that has a, a significance to coming to Advent. Uh, you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but I, I say this all the time to make sure that we understand that Advent's meaning is the already not yet. We are celebrating what is already going to happen at the coming of Christ at Christmas. And so it's a preparation for that, but it's also a preparation for the coming of Christ at the end of time. That's the not yet. And so here is a warning from Jesus. Make sure that the gospel is deeply invested in your life and in you as a person that you have given yourselves to the multiplication of that great gift you've given. And this can happen in so many ways by being faithful in our vocations as uh, in marriage for our wives, for our children, in ministries, in different ways in which God calls us to serve, that we do it multiplying that great gift of good news that has been given to us through our baptism. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today, as uh, we leave, I want to remind you that this is also the optional memorial for two great saints, both amazing women in the history of the church. First, we have St. Margaret of Scotland, a wonderful, wonderful lady. And we also have St. Gertrude, two saints that I'd encourage you today to go on search, go on Google and check them out. Go in a saint's book, read up on these great women of God and the impact that they have made 
on so many others. Truly, these two women are among those who, in taking that gold coin, multiplied it tenfold, a hundredfold in their life and in their ministry. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.